hello from my Osway bathroom. I'm really sorry if there is any echo in this video, but today I wanted to share with you a peek into our two new bathrooms. So for those of you who aren't aware of what we've done to our house, we've added on an additional story. So we now have an ensuite attached to our primary bedroom and we also have a main bathroom with, hallelujah, a bath in it, which I was so excited about. So for the sake of the audio, I'm going to stand outside of the bathroom. So hopefully you can hear me more clearly and without any echo and I will be sure to link everything that I talk about down in the description box below including the details of our builders and so they were the ones who employed the contractors to complete the works or carry out the works in both the bathrooms so the waterproofing the tiling uh, the plumbing etc so this video will focus more on the fixtures and fittings so the first thing to note is we've got the pocket door so this was really a design detail to maximize the space so that we didn't have a door opening out into our bedroom which is really really functional though I will say at night time if you need to go to the bathroom because we keep the door closed it is a little bit noisy and that's probably my only complaint and that is not a structural issue that is just a fact of having a pocket door uh, so the configuration of the bathroom is you walk in on the left hand side there is a toilet which I like because it is concealed from view when you are in the bedroom then you have the shower which is straight ahead and we've done it without the door so it is a walk-in shower and this mimics the walk-in style that we actually have in our downstairs bathroom which we renovated shortly after we purchased this house then facing the toilet that is where we have the shaving cabinet affixed to the wall and also our vanity all of the tiles that we purchased are from tile cloud and we actually use the same sort of tiles in both bathrooms so we use the byron ivory travertine mat stones in the largest size which i personally wanted to do because it makes cleaning a lot easier the more grout that you have so the smaller the tile the more challenging or at least the more work it will be to actually clean and that was something i wanted to minimize because we wanted the house to be as functional and practical as possible so we've carried that on up the wall as well with some cutout details to expose some of the wall which we've painted white it's just dulux vivid white if memory serves and then behind the shower this is really where we wanted to have a bit of a wow factor and we've been drawn to the color green probably because it comes from nature and it is scattered throughout our entire home not just in the actual uh, building design details but also in our own furnishings so we opted for this jade green tile can't recall the exact name of this tile but I will as mentioned have that all down below the thing that really appealed to us was that it's not a flat tile it has a lot of curves and ridges to it which means it has this mottled color which is really dimensional and has a lot of depth and in my eyes is really really beautiful and it's sort of depending on the light it changes color as well with all the reflections which we really really like I'll also have the details for the grouting that we used. We just went with the recommendations on the Tile Cloud website as that was what made most sense. And we're really happy. The white grout really makes those statement tiles stand out and pop. Maybe we'll start with the shower. So the first thing that you probably notice when you're looking at the shower is that there is a shower ledge. I personally wanted this because I have quite a lot of beauty products and I thought this would be a really practical way to store them all. And I like that it creates a bit of differentiation between the travertine look tile and then the green tile that we have halfway up the wall. I do have more products by the way, they're just stashed away because they're not as aesthetically pleasing. So FYI, this is all for YouTube. <laughs> all of the hardware and fixtures that we have for both bathrooms are from ABI Interiors and we went with the brushed nickel because we felt like it was slightly more modern than stainless steel while still being very timeless and classic. In our downstairs bathroom, we have both the waterfall style tap and then we also have the bar with the moving shower hose. We decided not to do that in our ensuite as we just preferred having the waterfall style shower. And I'm really glad that we did this because it looks a lot cleaner in here. And I found that it's not really necessary. I think probably just from a cleaning perspective, having the uh, shower arm with the hose, that would make it a lot easier to clean in there, but it's really not a deal breaker for me. The tap we have at the entrance of a shower, this was something we did downstairs so that you don't get wet when you're turning it on, which is great. And this has a really thick 
plate with quite a wide sort of set to it so it almost has a bit of a statement effect which I quite liked. A heated towel rail for me was a non-negotiable and we were really fortunate that we were able to put these at the end of the shower because this is not always possible and it really depends on how long your shower is. So I'm thrilled that we were able to do that because as you can see we've really utilized all the space and at least all the wall space in this bathroom so there weren't really any other placement options. Now these are from a brand called Phoenix I believe and they're also in the brush nickel. I don't think that the color is like for like with the ABI interiors, but you really can't notice the difference. And as you can see, I'm really kind of making that green vibe pop in the bathroom with the towels as well, which is all matching. Those are from Adairs, I just got them during one of their sales. The toilets, we've got the same one in both bathrooms, and these are from the Kato brand that is sold at Reese. When you're facing the toilet to the left, that is where we have the hand towel rail, which I think is quite a practical option. And then on the wall next to it, that is where we have the toilet roll holder, which is again from ABI Interiors. I don't necessarily love this design, but I learned from our first renovation not to get one that is just to fix into the wall because they can loosen. So opposite the toilet is where we have our vanity and mirror, and I'm so thrilled with these. These are both from ADP, and we purchased them from WC Thrifty in Campsie. And I have to say, really thrilled with the whole experience there. We have a semi-recessed or inset sink with the push down plug. We opted for the brush nickel here as well, and this was a special order, which you can do. Uh, then the actual style, I will leave all the details down below and the exact colors that we chose. But we went for something that was really minimal and neutral, but that still had sort of these nice earthy warm tones. So we've got this oaky wood look finish with the actual cabinetry and then the stone on the top. We did go with Caesar stone, which I think is a little bit more expensive. And I like that there is a little bit of detail to it. The configuration has two drawers on the left hand side and then it has two doors with a slightly shallower shelf on the inside and there's also a little rubbish bin though I have to say I, I thought that this would be a really functional aspect of the unit but I found myself thinking maybe we need to get an actual bin to put next to the toilet like we've got downstairs I just think it would be a little bit easier to use. Oh, and I forgot to say it's a 1200 millimeter vanity. So it's quite a decent size. We probably could have done dual vanity double bowl, but we wanted to be able to have some bench space. And I think we made the right choice here. Then we've got the mirrored cabinet. And this is again, also from ADP. What really drew me to this style was that we could get a 1200 millimeter cabinet, which as you can see, looking at the space, it would have been a real squeeze and it would have been a little bit of a challenge to do so if we had a style that opened outward. So essentially the hinges for this particular mirror are in the center as opposed to on the sides, which means that the mirrors open inward. A little bit unusual, but it meant that we would be able to have a larger style cabinet. Otherwise we would have had to have gone with a 900 millimeter. On the sides, and this will be a lot more apparent when we go into the main bathroom, you do have these really lovely exposed shelves so you can just reach and grab something out of them without having to open up the cabinet. We do also have the mirror and we also opted to get a electrical power point in there as well so that my husband can plug in his shaver and also his electric toothbrush. The shower screen we're able to customize to the exact length that we wanted and we have really good clearance to be able to enter and exit the shower. What I really like is that the company that did the glass, they also asked us what color hinges we wanted so that we could have a really seamless look throughout the bathroom. Then we do also have tile insert drains. The tile insert drain for in the shower was a custom order through Reese and I will leave the details for the actual brand just because we had a very specific size that we needed which was provided to us by our builders. The other tile insert which is a square in the center of the bathroom this is one that we bought from ABI Interiors and yeah I think it looks really really smart. So that is our ensuite. Now let's move over to the main bathroom and I can give you a bit of a peek in there.
Again, I'm gonna stand outside of the bathroom just because I think that the sound quality will be better as a result, but the main bathroom leads off our secondary lounge that we've got upstairs, which is essentially a play space for the kids. And the first thing that you see when you open the door is our beautiful bath. Now, just when you look at the configuration, it's pretty simple to see on the left-hand side on the wall, you have the vanity and then the mirror facing right in front of you, you've got the bath, then on the right hand side you've got the toilet which is across from the vanity and then we have a shower in the right hand corner. Talking through all the details, I'll start with the vanity first. So you can see here we've opted for the exact same look in terms of the vanity that we chose as we have in the ensuite. So this is again purchased from ADP and I really like that we've got this very seamless look. The sinks that we've got here, we went with the recessed sinks just because in our experience, when you do have the sinks sitting above or on top of the vanity, there is a lot of opportunity for the water to splash out and go everywhere. And we thought that this would be, again, more practical. And you can see we've done the custom overflow ring and also the custom plug here too in the brush nickel. The taps are again the same ones that we have in the ensuite from ABI Interiors. We went with a four drawer option for the vanity and these are really quite deep and large. There's lots of space in them. I like that in the bottom drawers you have two sections and the front section you can configure the compartments to fit your belongings which is really really handy. We had some trouble deciding on the placement for the hand towel rail so we decided to actually affix this onto the side of the vanity unit which I think is the best option and it looks really smart. It also sits right next to the heated towel rail which is hidden right behind the door and again this was a placement option for us because we were thinking about where we could actually put it and it made the most sense to put it here. I will have the details for the heated towel rail down below but again we did opt for the brushed nickel. This bathroom is a really generous size. I will put the dimensions up on screen and for that reason we were able to go with a really big vanity and the size of this is 1800 millimeters so it's quite long and we decided to replicate the size of the vanity with the mirror as well and this is the exact same type of mirror that we've got in our ensuite but instead of being a 1200 this is the 1800 length and it does have four sections to it and again it has that same effect where it opens up inwards rather than from the outside and I think here you can get a really good sense of those side compartments or shelves that I was talking about earlier, which I really, really love. Moving over to the bath, this was another purchase from Reese, and this is from the Kato Lux range. This is the new bath, if memory serves me. And the thing that I was personally really drawn to is the way that it curves. One thing I didn't know, and this is again another little tip, is that the baths do not come with their own plugs. So you do have to purchase that separately. I was able to talk with our plumber and make sure that we got the correct size and the correct style. We do have the Gooseneck style freestanding bath tap, which I just think is a really special detail and something I really love about the bathroom. And then we have the actual tap affixed to the wall. I find it's close enough for our son to actually grab it and pull on it so that he can put more water on the bath if he wants to. So I don't know if that's a pro or a con uh, because he takes quite a lot of enjoyment and glee out of doing so during bath time. And just so you're wondering, yes, there are loads of bath toys in the bathroom. I've just hidden them away for aesthetic reasons, but they're usually scattered either in front of the bath or in the bath itself. Right now they're just tucked away in a drawer. The toilet as mentioned is the exact same one that we have in our ensuite. So here's a bit of look at it. And you can see that we've got the toilet roll holder next to it, which again is the same as in our ensuite. Then looking at the shower, this is one that has been boxed in and we opted for a frameless style. Personally, I think that this has a much more minimalist and modern look and feel to it. And it also feels a lot less clunky. Again, they use the same hinges to ensure that we had a really seamless look with all of our hardware throughout. So this shower will eventually be the one that our kids use as they get older. And in there we have opted for a shower niche as opposed to a shelf. And I'm really happy with that. I think it's also a really decent size. We also opted for the shower arm, also with the additional hose style tap, which as I mentioned earlier, makes it really easy to clean. And then again, we do have that same detail on the floor with the tile insert drain, which again is also replicated in the center of the bathroom where we have the larger one in the square size. 
Then you can see that we've used those same tiles as we had in the ensuite here in our main bathroom. They're coming off a little bit pinky on camera. They're quite creamy looking with a bit of a biscuit touch. And then we have opted to have that same tile as a backdrop behind the bath, but this time in a blue. And I will put the color details down below as well. Again, just really love the fact that you have all that dimension and depth when you're looking at it and it sort of bounces the light off really nicely and really stands out with the white grout. So that was a look at our ensuite and our main bath as part of our first floor addition. I hope that you enjoyed this, getting to see a really good overview of both the spaces and how they have turned out after I shared little glimpses and little sneak peeks throughout. And if you do have any particular questions, please just drop them down in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I will slowly be making my way through the rest of the house as I group all the different rooms together that make the most sense. I'm hoping to do the kitchen next as I know that 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 is a space or area in the home many of you are dying to see. I'm going to wrap things up here. So thank you so much for watching and spending some of your day with me. If you are currently on your own renovation journey, I do hope it's been going well. Please share with me in the comments what you've been up to, what progress you've made on your reno, and I will see you all next time with a brand new video. See you very soon and thanks again. Bye!